Hey, this is Jamie from Stonemeyer Games. I'm a little bit off camera today because I wanted to show you with this new setup um, a few things that'll be helpful if you can just look directly down at the table and I can describe them to you. So hopefully the audio is okay. I'm using my phone for this. Uh, but the first thing I wanted to show you is on the mech mats themselves. So we added, after hearing your feedback about concerns with moving tokens around, moving the three tokens on your mech mat around when you're trying to slide cards under the mat, either upgrade items to meld meteorites or to solve quests, we added riser stickers. So there are stickers here that you can put optionally on your mech mats if you want, totally your choice. You put them on here and they raise up the mech mat just a little bit off the table, letting you insert stuff underneath it. So say we have some tokens here on the, on the mech mat and you want to uh, you want to meld a meteorite, you can just slide that right under the mat here. Slide that under the mat. And in this example, actually, I'm going to give you an end game example in a minute. We're going to have multiple melded meteorites. And so I'm going to meld more than one. The cards need riser stickers too. So I'm going to put, put a couple of them here, under here. So you can see what that looks like. So I have a couple. I have actually the maximum of four melded meteorites under this mech mat. So let's put those in there. And then uh, just for space, I'm not gonna put any items over here, but I can put some quests. And I wanted to show you with the sleeved cards. I have a thick sleeved card here, and that slides under here as well. Just slides right under there. And I'll slide one more quest right under there as well. So we'll, we'll pretend that I've solved two quests in this game. I have four melded meteorites. And what else do I have? I have a bunch of workers here. Um, I have a bunch of cards off camera here. So I have eight total cards. I have some coins that I earned during the game and I have a bunch of corruption tokens. I'll toss these down on the mat so you can actually see them. Bunch of corruption over here on the mat. Corruption is what I've vanquished from this, uh, this land as I've moved around the board. Now let me move the camera a little bit because um, I'm gonna show you what the end game looks like. So let's try moving this camera. So I'll pivot over here for a second. So you can see I have my mech on this location and we're gonna pretend that I trigger the end of the game. And you'll do that by to place a star on base camp over here. To place a star on base, base camp, you need to boast about it. So you need to have achieved the goal here on base camp and you need to have boast about it. So let's say that I haven't actually boasted about this, this star yet. Yeah, this star is still over on my mech mat. I move to this location and I choose a gather action and I'll choose one side of this slash here. I can either choose to gain a guile and a power or because this slot is cleared, we've cleared all the corruption from the slot, I can now boast. I can boast about my achievement with my achievement being that I have four melded meteorites. As we show, let's see if I can move the camera over there. Right over there, yeah, see those four melded meteorites. So I have four melded meteorites. I get to put a star on that achievement. And now we're gonna walk through endgame scoring. You can see some other players have some stars there. And actually, before I get there, um, I wanna mention how the endgame actually works. So I've triggered the end of the game. And uh, so players can remember how endgame is triggered. It says here, the game ends after a player places their fourth glory token. All players then take one final turn. This is actually on one of the two reference cards that you have. Some, this is usually in rule books, but I wanted it to be here so players didn't have to look it up at the end of the game. They've done these things, they've boasted, and uh, boast is, is described over here on this side of the, the reference card. And now their, their reference card reminds them that uh, this is how the game ends, when a player places their fourth glory token, which I've done, and then all players take one final turn. That says all players, not all other players. So it means that um, after I complete my turn here, I'll complete that turn, then each other player will take their turn, and then I'll take one final turn after that. I get to take the last turn of the game as being the, the advantage of the player who actually triggered the end of the game. Um, with that last turn of the game, I probably try to vanquish a little bit more, try to find some way to earn a little bit more money because money is points. Money equates to points at the end of the game. So let's now walk through end game scoring. And I put some other players out here. I won't score for them, but we have some players. I can show you here, like multiple players have achieved at least one of these goals or one of these goals. Uh, multiple players have achieved this one and I'm gonna be the red player. So we're gonna score for the red player and scoring starts over here. So scoring starts with coins that you've accumulated during the game. So these coins will score at the end of the game. 
I'm also going to score coins for items that I've upgraded. Uh, let's pull out an item here. Here's an item. So if I had actually upgraded this item, if I had slid this under my mech mat, if I'd slid that under there, um, I would gain four coins at the end of the game. That's when you gain these coins. Uh, you don't gain them by playing the card. By gaining the card, you gain them if you have upgraded this card under your mech mat. You gain those four coins. But I haven't done that. So I don't gain anything here. I just have my $28 so far. This brings us over here to this chart. So this chart asked me to look at how much popularity I have. So by solving quests, you improve your popularity, how the people of this, this land view you. And so I have solved two quests. So I have two popularity with two popularity, two solve quests for every star that I have out here on base camp, on the glory track, I gain $8. So I have four stars, so I'll gain $32. We'll pull the little tray here. We have a little tray of materials that it, that's included in the game. So I'm gonna pull $28. There's 20, and there's a five. There's a five right here. And don't worry if you see these tokens being a little bit off center, that's just because this is a, a pre-production copy, not the final copy. Just wanna be transparent about that. And then we need some, we need a three here. I'm essentially doubling my score. There's a three. Okay, so $28. And now finally, for every corruption token that I have, uh, that I've gained during the game, I gain $2. So this is a, a, another reason, kind of an ongoing resource that you can gather. It's a reason, uh, one of many reasons for players to vanquish corruption from the land. The numbers on these corruption tokens doesn't matter during endgame scoring. It just matters that I have the token. So this token scores the same as here as this five dollar uh, five token, not five dollar token, five corruption token. The reason these numbers are on here is that this token is more difficult to vanquish than this token. So ideally during the game, I'm probably looking for three value corruption tokens because they're easier to vanquish. I, I can spend, here's one. So I only needed to spend three guile to vanquish this token instead of five power or four guile for this token. That's why the, the colors are different. But anyway, at the end of the game, uh, these all corruption tokens, uh, the numbers don't matter. They're all worth two coins. And I have a total of 10 corruption tokens over here. So I'll score 20 more coins for that. If I had the 20 value corruption token, so this comes from location 20, it costs 10 power plus 10 guile to gain this token on location, tw tw uh, location 20 if I vanquish it. Um, this at the end of the game is also just worth $2 at this point, but it's its own glory category here too. So we're kind of saying in this game that the yellow player vanquished uh, this, this uh, corruption token from location 20. And so they're gaining coins for this star, for this glory, but they're also gaining two coins for it over here. But that wasn't me, that was the yellow player. So my final score here would be uh, 76. So my score would be 76, which is a pretty good score in this game. Um, this is obviously a hypothetical situation. And just to walk through these other categories, so this is the one where I melded four meteorites. I have the four meteorites over here, a little bit off camera. Uh, this one says that I have at least seven corruption tokens. And so I obviously I did. I probably probably scored that during the game when I right when I gained seven corruption tokens. If I could find a place to boast about it, this one says eight cards. Have at least eight cards, and that's what I have. I have exactly eight cards here. And to make sure I clarify this category, uh, the cards over here that I've that I've uh, tucked under my mat, whether I've upgraded them, I've melded them, or I've solved the quest, those no longer count as cards. These are cards. These are the free floating cards on the table. These are the cards that I'm that I have in my hand, and they include my starting cards, and they include any cards that I've gathered over the course of the game. Um, so all cards under my control at the end of the game, or during the game, count as cards for this purpose, for the scoring of this category. So I do have eight of them, that's why I got to score that category. And then over here, I only have six workers, so I didn't score this category, I didn't really set it up for this, but we'll just say that this player uh, explored a lot over the course of the game and gathered at least five map tokens. Whenever you explore a new tile and you flip it over, you also gain a map token. Uh, that's the primary way of gaining these map tokens. And so that's where I would have gotten this. I know this mat looks really crowded right now. I'm just doing that for the camera. You could easily keep these things off to the side. You can stack these up really easily and keep them off to the side if you'd like.
But yeah, that's how I scored those, those categories, ending up with a score of 76. So yeah, if you have any questions about in-game scoring, let me know in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I have some other videos to film in the near future about expeditions to show you a little bit more. Now that I have this camera set up, I think it might be a little bit easier to show gameplay because I can, camera's a little shaky, but it stays level so I can zoom in on things and zoom back up. So I might try to do some gameplay footage in the near future if this video works out. All right, thank you.